We're going to go to citizens uh, public comment on the budget. Um, and let me remind uh, the people who are here, this particular portion of public comment is only regarding the public hearing for the budget. If you want to comment on anything else, that will be during our general session, which will follow this session. So this is only for the budget. I do have a card, so I am going to read the guidelines. So the Lexington County School District 1 Board of Trustees provides a time for citizens' participation during the public hearing on the general fund budget. There are a few guidelines, of course. First, in order to speak, you must be a parent or legal guardian of a student in Lexington County School District 1 or a resident and a taxpayer of the district. Second, each speaker will have three minutes. Third, you may comment on the 2020-2021 proposed general fund budget. However, you may not speak about specific individuals, whether students or staff. There are other ways to bring situations like that to the board's attention. We want to give everyone who came here tonight a chance to speak, so uh, board members will not reply to your individual remarks. And if someone makes the point or points you came to make before you, if you could just state that you agree with the previous speakers and not restate every point, that would help us move along. We also ask that you not clap or make any comments, either while an individual is speaking or after a speaker finishes, as that also slows down the process considerably. If we wanted you to speak, to, if you wanted to speak tonight, we ask you to fill out a card that gave us your name and address for our records. Those cards were in the sign-in table as you came into the meeting. If you have not filled out a card and wish to speak to us about the budget, only the budget, I just want to remind you, hold up your hand and Ms. Hill will provide a card for you at this time. Do I have anyone else who wants to speak that has not provided a card? Okay, we'll go to the card then. Um, I'd like to invite Ms. Ch Chelsea Snellgrove to the, um, back to the monitor in the back. She lives at 344 Kaiser Road, Lexington, South Carolina, and uh, she has a student at Red Bank Elementary, and she's going to talk about the budget. Ms. Snellgrove. Thank you. Um, I know times are tough, but um, hear me out. Uh, uh, I have something to say about the budget. It might not concern the general budget specifically, um, but um, here goes. I believe we can all agree that kids deserve equal education regardless of socioeconomic status or race. With that said, it is obvious to me that in Lexington School District 1, equal opportunities do not exist for all students. I've looked on in awe of the plans for the new Centerville Elementary School and found the comparison to my son's elementary school, the same one that I attended over 25 years ago, shockingly unequal. Students at the new Centerville will be given opportunities in several clubs that are not offered at my son's school and will have access to state-of-the-art technologies also not available at my son's school. Although disparities in student opportunities are seen across the board, these inequities are most evident in our elementary schools. Using data collated from the National Center for Educational Statistics in Lexington 1's 2019 uh, CFAR, I've noticed an alarming trend in the people activity funds in general Schools with higher numbers of minorities and impoverished students disperse significantly less money towards uh, student activity expenditures. For example, Saxagatha Elementary has approximately 35% minority students and 56% students on free or reduced lunch programs. Their approximate spending per pupil on activity expenditures is $99. By contrast, Midway Elementary has approximately seven minority students 7% minority students and 8% students on free or reduced lunch. Meanwhile, their approximate spending per pupil on activity expenditures is $281, almost triple that of Saxagatha. White Knoll Middle, which has approximately 40% minority students and 53% students on free or reduced lunch, spends a paltry $235 per pupil on activity expenditures while Pleasant Hill Middle has about 19% minority students and 14% students on free and reduced lunch and spends roughly $525 per pupil on activity expenditures, more than double that of White Knoll Middle. These are just a few examples which highlight the inequities that marginalized students in our district face. With that said, I'm calling on the school board to address these issues and actively work to create equal opportunities for students and look for ways to create equity through the budget. Thank you, Ms. Snellgrove. We appreciate that. Anyone else wishing to address the board regarding the budget? 
Okay, at this time, we are going to adjourn the public hearing of the 2020-2021 proposed general fund um, operating budget. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay, thank you, Dr. Powers. Do I have a second? Thank you, Ms. Green. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries and we are now adjourned. We will take, let's see, it's six minutes till eight. We'll take six minutes and we'll be reconvened back at eight o'clock. Thank you. But we're just getting started, so stay. <laughs> yes, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, I'm gonna be here.